What's going on everybody? I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's enjoying their day. Depending on where you're watching in the world, morning, afternoon, or evening, I just hope that you um, are getting a good start to the week. Um, for those who are new to Rebuilding Community Trust, this channel is uh, created and it hopes to empower and the com deal with the community issues that we have, whether it's relation to mental health, police brutality, uh, relationships. I hope that we, you know, that you guys are getting something out of this and um, are being able to empower yourselves and, and spread the, the message. For those who's been listening, those who do listen, thank you. As always, I don't take for granted for the love and support. Continue to please share and hit the like button so the algorithm can spread to empower the message to be heard and applied to. I'm gonna talk about mental health again. Um, I wanna kind of come from a different angle um, on being in relationships. Um, whether in, in many means, whether we're dealing with parents, whether we're dealing with uh, spouses or even when we're dealing with um, girlfriends or dating relationships, even dealing with many aspects. Right. How, what do you do when someone is too much? How, how do we uh, deal with mental illness where it doesn't affect us and, and it causes relationships to be severed because of it? Right. And, and the um, African-American community, I'm, I know other communities are dealing with this as well. Well, how do we handle the pressures of dealing with someone with mental illness? I'm going to give some statistics as well, but I want to um, hopefully shed some light on this on this perspective in regards to dealing with mental illness. And if you're in relationships with people that are mentally ill, how do we deal with it? It was the article that I read um, or kind of glanced over, just kind of glanced over, but read it a little bit in the detail and some aspects of this individual was dating a, a girl and she was um she was uh she had depression and a lot of a lot of other mental illnesses and it became too much for him and he was struggling with the fact of even dealing with this person again in this aspect or leaving this person and trying to get them help so it's, it's a pressure that it was propelled me to put this video out i'm sure someone we those who watch it can agree they have dealt with this um issue with family members and and or relationships and it, it became a struggle uh, some general strategies that can use to help uh, when you deal with mental health and um, those who are, are struggling with mental illnesses is listen without making judgments and to concentrate on their needs in that moment. Ask them what would help them, reassure and signpost to practical information or resources, avoid confrontation, confrontation and ask if there is someone they would like to, you to contact. There are many ways to look at, you know, saying mental illness and how to help someone. But in regards to dealing with the pressures Personal experiences, I've dealt with it, um, where I have engaged with people that had mental illnesses, whether it was, it was family members or even dealing with relationships. Um, one of the things that we got to understand, we can't take on the mental illness, right? In the sense of um, thinking we can save them, right? And, and I'm going to go over some statistics, but I know particularly in the black community, it's a lot of mental illnesses floating around. It's a lot of issues, you know, when it, whether it's a family structure, whether it's dealing with, um, you know, saying community structure, when it comes to uh, family and marriage structures, there are mental illnesses that, that plague the black communities. And some of the interesting statistics here, um, we can go to it is uh, Mental Health America, MHA National.org. And we got to understand that African-Americans make up 13.4 percent of the U.S. population. But over those 16 percent reported having mental illness in the past year. So with this, just stop with that. Right. So that's reported. So those who actually took the time to get help. Right. The, honest, the thing to understand, whether you're in the, whether parents, spouses, dating, friendships, even some aspects of mentorships or counseling, therapy relationships, we got to understand that our jobs in these in these in these relationships is to encourage support and empower encourage support and empower and when we're dealing especially when it's in something with a marriage or dealing with a relationship like a dating or courting relationship when you when you're learning this person and they have the mental illnesses you got to understand going into it you know that this person needs help right a lot of times with especially when relationships we think that we can save them or they think we, we can save them and a lot of times people use the people that's in the relationships that are healthy and they rely, they lean heavy, heavily on them to the point where they think that 
this person's presence or this person's being in a relationship is going to save them or get them by, even to the point of enablement, right? And we got to understand that there's balance. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to be able to understand and learn about these mental illnesses and study them, you know, get, get, ask questions, you know, as you're talking to that person and seeing what, what is the, some of the coping mechanisms, learn how can you help them in the most positive aspect that you can. And with a lot of times with, with, we know the stigma of, of mental health and therapy is not looked upon in this moment. People think that, you know, I don't need this help. I don't need this counseling. I don't need this. I'm good. I'm, I'm in a good space. I'm a good place. You know, we use, they use objects or things of this life to to make them cope and think that they don't need this therapy, but they really do. So even with this 16 percent, that's over seven million people. That's more than people that's in population Chicago, Houston and Philadelphia combined. You know, we go into the demographics, right? We go into historical dehumanization, oppression and violence against black and African-American people. Right. Racism, structural, institutional and individual. Um, we look at the things such as COVID-19. We look at loss from jobs. We look at family, family structure within the home, whether you're a single parent, whether you have two people in the household, however it may come. you got the device and political rhetoric. You have so many different things that contribute to um, mental health breakdown. So, again, when we're dealing with people um, and we're in these situationships or relationships with people that are mentally ill, we can't drag them down to, to get help. A lot of times I know from personal experience, um, I have asked people to go get help. I have, you know, what I'm saying uh, 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 try to empower them, try to encourage them. And with a lot of things, depending how deep the trauma runs or depending how long or how long they've been dealing with this stuff it, it, it's harder and what you find out is you have the pity you have um the the the, the ability to want to see them well and we tend to try to take on and try to you know say i'm going to be here i'm going i'm going to keep trying to help them and then we not not only that we know it we're starting to lose our mental health we start to go down right because the pressures of helping that person and their dependency on that person whether the emotional dependency whether it's uh, uh, um, mental, you know, as far as walking them through day to day, whether it's, it's listening to them, you know, saying deal with the issues that are going on in their lives, whether they're talking about traumatic backgrounds and past experiences, these things can drain a person as healthy. And also, if you're going to deal with someone that has major mental illness or a lot of depression or mental illness in general, you have to make sure you're be able to take care of yourself in the process. You have to be able to. Um, Get you know, saying take your breaks. You got to be able to try to lighten the mood. You got to be able to take care of your mental health. You go to therapy, right? Make sure you're whole enough. You know, what I'm saying to be able to understand the differences between what what it is you're dealing with and what are you what they're dealing with. Um, it become it can become a lot for some. You know, what I'm saying it can become a lot in regards to dealing with that because you know you care about them, but you don't want to. You know, it's draining you. It's draining you to deal with that. <laughs> So when we think about uh, going back to statistical data, um, we really look at these numbers and we look at the census data and 50, 55 percent of all black and African-American people lived in the South. 18 percent lived in the Midwest, 17 percent in the Northeast and 10 percent in the West. We understand that that says a lot with the numbers because it talks about the availability of mental health professionals in these areas. You know, saying how in these times, especially with COVID, you know, a lot of uh, mental health professions or 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 uh, the lack of better word um but we have a, a shortage of of uh, therapy therapists that could also pose a risk of why people are not going to get help and it leads to self-diagnosis right it leads to people trying to be therapists and that, and that's a dangerous thing because as i read the article and the the individual said he was trying to be a therapist to her you know she got to be he had to be the wear the hat of a therapist you got to wear the hat of um of, 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 you know, being a boyfriend or, or in, in a relationship, you got to be able to be supportive. You got to be able to empower them, encourage them. And it, it took a toll on him. It, it took a toll. It started messing with his everyday life because she was so dependent upon him in the emotional sense and in the mental sense and the physical sense, even the spiritual sense. You know what I'm saying? For those who believe in God and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? It, it does take a toll from you from the spiritual side of the house. Um, we got to be able to understand our limits and that we we're not, you know, if you're not 
a, a professional therapist or you not had uh, life coaching or you have not had experience in this, it may be uh, overwhelming to deal with that. So the goal is to encourage, support and empower. Like, look, like I understand you're dealing with depression and we talk about it. We, we work through it. You know what I'm saying? You, you, we have these moments where we sit down, we talk about it, share these things, you know, but you don't want to trauma bond either. Because a lot of times what happens with keeps people in these toxic relationships is um, trauma bonding. You know what I'm saying? I, I go through something, you go through something. If you're going to be in a position of helping someone with mental illness, you can't trauma bond with them. Because then it's going to create a bond to where now you both are, 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 are sharing those, those, um, those experiences instead of you're trying to support them in dealing with mental health. So you have to be well and whole. To even even deal with someone that's, that has mental mental illness, and sometimes we don't have a choice, especially when it comes to parents or it comes to siblings, those that we grew up with. You know, we might be married to a person that has mental illnesses. They might have PTSD from a past event, and you might it might not always been shown, or it might have been shown, and you chose to stick stick with that person, and then y'all get married. So now you're in a situation where it's like, wow, like I'm I really see the 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 behaviors starting to show. The goal is to take them to their to therapy and professional help. You know, what do you do with what do you do when, when someone don't want to help? What if you tell what they tell you? I don't want to help. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been through too much. You know what I'm saying? This, this experience was so traumatic and so damaging that I don't foresee the therapy being a, a, a um, being able to help me, you know, move past it. <laughs> how do you get how do you deal with a, a, a relationship or a marriage or, or a parental relationship? Whatever the case may be, how do you deal with that? You know, it's at this point, it's like. If I walk away, they could they could be worse off, you know, um, in this specific article. Where the boyfriend said he's going to lead a girl, he, he's, he's really thinking about walking away from the relationship because he did all he could and it's causing him issues. It's causing it's messing with his mental health. And he did. He felt like he took on a lot. So now. What happens to the, the, the girlfriend? What happens to that person? You know, all we can do is get him set him up for success. Get him, get him help. You know what I'm saying? Try to get a family member involved. Try to lead them into that, that healthy place and getting them the therapy and the professional help that they need. What can we, what, but if they don't want that, at this point, what do we do? We Do we leave them? Do we continue to check in on them? Can, do we continue to um, encourage them? Yes, I, I believe you can encourage and help them. But if you're in a relationship where that person is becoming a toxic aspect to your life and it's causing damage you may have to downgrade that relationship and say look i can't be with you no more in that way you know what i'm saying i, I care i still love you i still i still want to be there for you but i have to take a step back from my own self i'm gonna get, i'm gonna check on you from time to time i'm going I'm gonna, you know we can still you know talk to each other from time to time but I, I have to know my limits and say okay i can't continue to uh, deal with this, this depression or this mental illness because it's affecting me. And sometimes it might be like that. Same with parents. You know, we, we try to get them help, you know, and they don't want it. A sibling who doesn't want it, then we have to take a step back and, and hopefully continue to check in on them and encourage them and support them and empower them and not enable them to continue to be that way. But sometimes, you know, people might, you might have to distance yourself for a while. You might have to distance yourself from those type of relationships because. You gotta, you're limited. As much as people want to think that they have it all together and they can take on all these these burdens when it comes to mental illness, is that you're limited. You're not, you're not, you don't have all the answers. You can't go against people's free will. You can't go against people's choices in regards to mental illness. They have to want to help. The three key points that we talked about is all we can do: empower, encourage, and support. But we cannot physically make the person go get counseling and get help. We can't make the person, we can't beat on the person and, 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 and threaten the person and, and, and force them to go down there. Because I, I've known people to go to rehab for alcohol and drug addictions and they went through the system. They turned it back out and still do the same stuff. It is more than the persons can bear in the sense of will. We have to make sure we understand that that people have to want to help. So if, if you're in a, in a, in a marriage. And that, and you did all you could, and that person is, is, is so toxic and is abusive and aggressive. You may have to make some provisions to separate. You might even make some provisions to divorce. 
not you know we don't advocate divorce and especially in the black community we don't need to keep doing that because we got the single parent homes and all these other types of stuff but we got to also be mindful that we can't just stay in something and be abused and be verbally abused physically abused you know what i'm saying or, or keep taking it, it destroys us at that point and then we're both gonna need help you know what i'm saying so we have to make decisions that are wise and smart in regards to dealing with that um The mental health of African-American people, uh, many other types of stereotypes, attitudes of rejection have decreased, but continue to occur with measurable adverse consequences. The historical and contemporary instances of negative treatment have led to the mistrust of authorities, many of whom are not seen as having the best interests of black and African-Americans in mind. That's an interesting perspective in the statistics, because, you know, a lot of times people don't think the doctors, if you have people can go as far as race, like, you know, I got a white doctor, they don't understand black problems. You know what I'm saying? They got a white uh, therapist, but he don't understand black problems. So, you know, it's not a, a lot of black therapists, per se, maybe. Right. And they don't they, you know, people want especially I'm, I'm sure anybody's like this, but black people want to have people that relate to them in regards to their, their problems. You know, it's easy to talk to someone that is of the same color who might have experienced the same things. And then that person's healed so they can probably help heal them. But again, you know, I think it's a little deeper than understanding your struggles and learning how to take a look at self and start moving into, all right, okay, I know this happened to me. What are some things I can do to work through it? And I'm not taking the fact away that you might want someone that, that, that experiences or have be able to have some relatability or rapport with you to help you through it. Because some people don't know how to do it. They don't know how to find their way out. They just it's been so much that they don't know how they just need someone to guide them out and start getting them in the beginning stages of process to move in towards bettering themselves. So um, I don't I don't really have I mean, there's a lot of statistics and I'm going to probably put them in the comments. So like y'all can read for yourselves on the statistics of data. But I feel like that you're dealing with treatment issues, understanding how, how to seek the help. Going to a reputable therapist or professional psychologist or psychiatrist and dealing with these things is a step. Um, the church, you know, I know a lot of people don't want to deal with the church, but that's a resource. And I highly recommend people to get involved and go to church and, and you know, at some point um, sit down with uh, counselors or, or people to not only just pray over you, you know what I'm saying? But for those who, who get involved in church, which I highly recommend people do. But pray over you, but also able to help you deal with certain things, help you to see things from a different perspective. Um, the stigmas can be tackled. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with going to counseling. It's nothing wrong with knowing that I can't do it on my own. It's nothing wrong with seeing, hey, I need some help. And you got to be able to do more than just rely on the, the people that's close to you, because a lot of people, they don't know how to help. They know that they can educate themselves. And in and, and some instances, that may help that person. But a lot of people that's close to us, they may not have studied the mental illnesses they may not know how to deal with it they just all they know is just be there for you all they know is just hey you, you're gonna be cool it's gonna, you're gonna be all right you know what i'm saying we we're gonna work through it you know what i'm saying that's all they can really say but that support is necessary but really the true help counseling therapy that's what we got to move forward to. we got to start moving towards so that's all i have i just want to just take a little quick note on that um i, I pray that people are really taking it seriously i, I it's so much going on um, those who are in the military, those who are, are in the armed, armed services, I know it's hard right now to get mental help, mental um, professional help, but just keep pushing for that. Um, for the, all my brothers and sisters serving, I know it's something that I see every time I'm around. I'm in the military and seeing stuff going on and the people have mental illnesses and stuff and, and people are struggling and people are dealing with the, uh, the hard lifestyle that the military brings. Just continue to encourage you to go out there and get the help that you need. Um, um, it's really serious, and I, I take it seriously because it affects a lot. It affects a lot, and it, it, it's 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 more beneficial to take care of self because at the end of the day, we all know. And in, 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 I'm not even talking about the military, but jobs in general. People only care so much. They they you're you're a number to some. You're just a body in the, to fill in the, the job role. And people cannot care. People don't. I'm not saying a lot of people don't care, but some don't. You know what I'm saying? And they don't. They just want the work done. 
They just want the mission accomplished. They just want what they want, right? They just want you, but they don't really take the, the only way they're going to care about something if you make them care. If you tell them, hey, look, I can't do nothing. If, if it's if it's not even just dealing with the mission, but it's dealing with quality of life, you know, dealing with pay issues or dealing with family issues or dealing with personal issues. Those things matter. And you have to make people understand that you got to sit your boss down, whether you're a civilian or you're in the military, however it may go. Let them know, hey, look, I need to take this time to work through my therapy, get therapy and work through my issues. And it, it might not even be so much as taking time off. It might be that. But you need to stress the importance of taking care of your mind, taking care of your mental health. And being and if you're there for someone that's that's struggling with that stuff, empower them, encouraging them and letting them know, hey, let's get to let's get to this help. If they don't, you let them know, hey, if we don't, if you don't do what you need to do, then it can affect the relationship. It don't have to necessarily mean I'm going to depart from that relationship, but I'm going to downgrade you. I'm going to let you know I can't allow you to destroy me in the process. I got to be able to be like, no, nah, we either get this help or this relationship is going to take a hit. And if they don't still don't want the help, then you just don't have to excuse yourself from that relationship. You can still love them, still check on them, still do the three things. But be like, hey, I, I can't. I got to wash my hands because you can't make nobody do nothing. The only can, person you can control is yourself. And that's the, the whole capture of that article that I was reading. You know, saying that the boyfriend, he did what he could. But he said, look, it's getting to the point where it's going to mess up the relationship. And he had to let that person know. Or, or I guess he was in the process of letting that person know, hey, look, we're going to have to break up because this is, this is you're not doing what you need to do. Or it's, it's tough. And, and then understanding that it's just, it's just tough in general. Some people don't have a bandwidth to deal with mental illnesses. Some people just don't have it in them. It's too much for a person. And it's nothing wrong with that either. We just got to communicate that. And 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 though and I know it's hard for some to understand those who are struggling with mental illnesses, those who are struggling with uh, uh, being hurt and, and going through those, that process. It might be hard for them to understand, but it's like sometimes we can't. We got to make the better judgment for ourselves. And it don't have to be as abrupt and have to be rude and nasty and have to be all, you know, strife and that. You just sit them down and let them know, hey, look, I'm going to be here, but I got to I got to take a downgrade. I got to take a step back because I'm too I'm, I'm it's, it's affecting me. And it may get the person to move and go get help. It may it may say, oh, you don't you know, some people say, oh, you, you just selfish or you don't you don't care about, you know, you just hear, you know, people get into their judgment zones and, and they get because they enabled and they they dependent. So they're going to try to keep you around and using condemnation and guilt. But you got to stand your ground and say, no, I'm not I'm not doing that. Either we're going to work, we're going to get the help you need or I'm going to take a step back. And again, I'm going to be there for you, but. I got I got to, I got to keep pushing. So not to belabor on this long, but just just think about this stuff. You know, talk to you, to your people, those who are in those situations. You know, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this helps you when dealing with this. It gives you some encouragement of some sort and just try. If you want to stick around, just continue to understand that you got to take care of yourself, too. And if you find yourself getting out of whack and out of sorts, you got to you got to take a step back because if you don't. Then you're going to be just like them with the issues. You're going to, it's going to spread to you. You're going to be down. You're going to be depressed. And then who? What good is that going to serve you or them? So you have to have that balance and take care of yourself. So hopefully this helps. Y'all share. Hit the like button. Um, I want to put the comments. I mean, sorry, not comments. I'll put the the statistics in the comments below if you want to check it out for yourself or if you just want to do your own research on mental health and and numbers and statistics, then do so. But Hopefully this uh, empowers us, educates us, and hopefully gets us to make action and go out there and get us uh, get us our get our mental health together. So y'all be blessed. Love you guys. Leave a comment. Anything you want to hear about? I'm gonna try to put some more stuff out at some point. Um, I want to talk about bail reform. I know a lot of stuff's going on with the jails. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. You know, I'm gonna do some research, but y'all stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next one.